Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special New Year's Eve episode. This is Insecurity number 12, and I'm Heim Cohen. And once again, we're joined by with by t- whoever, Tom Webster. <laughs> Howdy, and, guys. And today, we, we uh, a news stream came across from the NSA talking about how they're going to inject Apple, or they're going to have Apple, a backdoor into Apple products. Now, that was the headline. I'm going to ask Tom, what does that really mean? Uh, Well, according to this report, um, what this means is basically if you're carrying an iPhone, iPad, anything, um, the NSA has a program called Dropout Jeep, and uh, it allows the NSA to do everything from turn on the microphone, turn on the camera, watch all network traffic, ship that data that they collect on you. Anything on the phone can be collected from them through this malware. So it is a jailbreak, backdoor, root hack. Um, This is some serious firepower they've got going on. They can ship that data over your data connection. If you shut that off, they can ship it over Wi-Fi. If you shut that off, they can even send it to themselves over text message. So they encrypt it into a text message packet and then ship it over through, you know, a couple hundred messages. Um, and is this going to cost me? Like, is this how, <laughs> does this go against my data cap? Um, I'm sure it would. I'm absolutely sure it would. Now, if I were them, it's probably going to be the best to get this over Wi-Fi somehow. So I would just be patient and wait for someone to hook up their phone. But if they really needed to, yeah, this would go against your cap, unless they've got a deal worked out with AT&T that says, hey. Anything that's uh, you know going to our headquarters, anything that's going to the Utah facility, you know where the network traffic's going. So, don't count that on the data plan. And well, because, they very well might have an agreement. I mean, you have this idea that at least on the Android side, which we don't know yet, which I'm sure is going to be the next uh, shoe to drop. Uh, you can see on my iOS uh, iPad, I can see where what data is being sent. But I guess this is so hidden that it just won't pop up. So how do you right. how do you call up AT and T and say, wait, I was uh, how did I get to my two and a half, my three, whatever whatever your data cap is? It doesn't show it here. This doesn't add up. What's going on? Right, and I'm sure that you know the NSA has probably got some deal with AT and T to not count that against your data cap, um, because that, that's a really easy thing to tip someone off on. Um, and it, I mean, if this is like it claims to be. Uh, a root-specific malware where they uh, they take your phone and just like jailbreaking it, they have to hook it up to something. Uh, well, some jailbreaks, they have to hook it up to something. Uh, currently, they don't have a remote way to install this malware from what they're saying. It is under development um, as far as these slides go. But they hook your phone up to something, install the malware. I imagine they've probably got some compensating control to not tip people off because... We would have heard about it by now if, uh, yeah, if it had come to light any sooner. So, well, they have so some how kind does of one get wait for Wi-Fi? How does someone get physical access? That that's the better question. I mean, who's who, somebody has to put it on your phone, so they need physical access. What are they right. doing when law enforcement stops and tries to pull the data off, or when so, you're at you an know, Apple store? You, any of this, any of this. So law enforcement traffic stop, you know, what were you doing on your phone? Oh, just GPS? Well, here, let me see and make sure. Um, It could be a law enforcement stop. It could be security at the airport. Um, I could see this being installed in most cases, either through, you know, um, an operative going in, tapping someone directly, like somebody, they're they're trailing someone intentionally. Someone leaves their phone on a coffee table or the table at McDonald's, they go to get a refill, hook it up, install the malware. It doesn't say how long it takes to install. So, you know, if it's a couple seconds, great. You hook it up, you walk away, sit the phone down, you're done. Um, if it takes longer than that, you know, sitting in customs takes forever. So I could definitely see this happening at uh, the nation's borders where, you know, customs agents are just like, well, hey, the NSA said we had to hook it up to this device here on the table, so we're just going to hook it up. And uh, you know, make sure you're not carrying child porn or anything like that. Once again, it always goes back to the child pornography. 
It always I does. That. And they go, really? This is what you think about? And I go, no, 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 you don't understand. It always goes back to protecting the children. And, and most of the time, that's really the only case. But again, it's a physical access uh, uh, attack. Right between, now. Right now. And we don't know... And we, we don't really know how it's done, but it assumes physical access. Now, the question is, do we know if encryption would stop it? Um, I'm not entirely sure. From what it looks like, um, at least as far as Android systems go, the system partition is separate from the user data partition, and you're only encrypting the user data partition. You're not encrypting the, the, the core Android operating system because it's open source, anyone can grab it, whatever. Why encrypt it? Only encrypt the stuff that the user has on there. It's really a, a nice way to do encryption. If Apple is doing it the same way, and the NSA is installing this to a system partition instead of the user data partition, which they should, right? I mean, that should be how this works. It should be an operating level hack. Um, then no, encryption would not stop this. It just goes to show, I mean, it's, it's, they're really getting through everything. And I can see this, oh, if it's on your computer, as soon as you hook it up, or it's on your phone, and as soon as you hook it up to your computer, now it's inside your computer. I'm sure that's also been tossed around. How do we get it to spread? Right, right. And, and it, you know, on top of that, so, uh, in, in Obama's little pre-Christmas on December 20th, um, I sat in the car and listened to on NPR, his, uh, his little end-of-the-year speech um, where he took questions from the you know, White House press booth and answered some stuff. He can't point out a single time, one time, that the NSA call records have prevented a terrorist attack. One time. And how long has this been going on? But it, it's, it doesn't work. It hasn't stopped a single terrorist attack. Yeah, and, and then they turn around and say, well, hey, but we're, we're doing this for our allies, too. Well, yeah, well, why did Russia just get bombed twice? Well, we have the other problem. This is the, the biggest problem is that – so I, we all saw the 60 Minutes piece. If you haven't, go watch the 60 Minutes piece. Oh, and it was such it, a fluff piece. Yes, it was like just straight up. It was just straight up. We're, we're trying to make this sound good, but – it was done so with such or no integrity to say they didn't have any of the people that needed to be there, and they didn't ask the hard-hitting questions. And then yeah. if you listen, it contradicted itself. I was watching it, and for a second I said, well, maybe this is a good idea. And then I thought about it and said, wait a second. They were talking about how they need warrants, but we know that they don't need warrants. And right. then the and then the next day the, the some court said that no you can't connect uh, you can't collect something the metadata and or the phone the phone records that's what it was mm -hmm. and now last week or a couple days ago another court said now you could so this is definitely something the Supreme Court's going to listen to yes and and we hope that whoever's fighting this is going to be able to explain correctly what all of this means. Because it's right. clearly not, it's not a, we're trying to prevent terrorism. There's something more to this. We want tabs on everybody at all times for a duration of their history of whatever. There's, there's really only two ways out of this, this NSA complex. There's two ways to stop this. There's the, the nice legal way where we do it with legislation. We do it with working through the court system. We do it through... Uh, the legal ways and means that have been set forth in this country for controlling the government, for you know, c controlling the power, for balancing things out. And we can do this the legal way, or we can do it the illegal way with Molotov cocktails, overturned cars, and uh, suicide bombers. And I'm really hoping we do it the first way, because if not, I mean, either you live in a police state or you fight a bloody revolution. Well, you're also hoping, I mean, there could be a third way to the point where everyone starts listening and starts questioning and starts saying, how do I better protect myself? And and we get the tech companies on it to to really try and push encryption. Look, you got to give Apple credit. Their uh, Touch ID seems to be really working well. Uh, when you start, when you when we migrated to iOS seven, the first thing it asked you is for a pin code, and they didn't make it easy to skip it. So they're trying to prevent. They're they're trying to instill privacy. 
I think Android, for the most part, does the same thing. They're trying to get you to put a pad, some sort of unlock mechanism. And if we, if people start hearing this in the news, they're going to start saying, "What's going on? What? Why? Why is this happening? Why is all these these rights being invaded or forced upon me?" And hopefully, they're going to learn to change. Right, and I mean, so so the tech companies are fighting back. So Google is fighting back. Microsoft, of all people, has grown some teeth and is fighting back. Um, Apple has stayed relatively quiet on this, but they stay relatively quiet about everything. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they're also fighting back in their way. Yahoo is fighting back. All of these implicated tech companies are fighting back, but at the end of the day, what does it matter if somebody can go in with the national security letter and say, hey, look, all of that user data is now ours. You can't tell anyone, you can't complain, and you can't stop us by law. Or else, you know, we'll just shut your company down. I mean, what's what's there to do? How do you compete with that? I mean, the one thing I do, I see the valid point of is if you're trying to really find somebody where you have a warrant and you, and you really want to go after someone, I can see a national security letter saying, please, we don't want any notice. We don't want anybody to change. We don't want this suspect to change things. The problem mm -hmm. is we don't know how many are issued. We don't know in what context. Are they doing it just to see, uh, to see their photos from their vacation? What, we, we don't know, and we just kind of wish, not that these transparency reports are, are meaningful in any way, but but we want to know how many letters are being issued. Do we well, really have something to worry about? I mean, think about it. So, so there have been private investigations taking place throughout all of history, right? Before national security letters were even a thing in this country, there have been private investigations. And uh, the gag order... I mean, that's not mandatory at all. When, when somebody approaches Google with a warrant and they say, now, again, it's dependent on the company. If somebody approached LavaBit with a, a warrant for someone, do they have to comply? Can they you know, pop up a banner when the person logs in and says the FBI is going to kill you? Uh, yeah, they could, but we don't need a gag order like that. That doesn't need to happen. Warrants and going through the standard channels of the justice system has worked, and it's worked brilliantly, and people understand it, it's fair, it, it takes oversight, it, it just works, and I don't get why we have to expand that, why we have to change it to make it so law enforcement basically has unlimited power when it comes to acquiring information. Well, I did hear that whoever the over, Congress is the oversight committee, but they have no idea what's going on. Right. I read that somewhere. So now you have an oversight committee that is clearly – uh, they have no idea what goes on in technology. They don't know where it's advancing, and they're supposed to be the oversight committee, but they have no idea. Right. It's like having a, uh, a series of editors that have never read a book and don't know how to write. Like it, It's having a series of illiterate editors trying to edit a book that you put forward and say, hey, is this okay? Oh, yeah, sure, it's okay. I mean, I guess, whatever. The word words and sentences and periods and everything else. Yeah, and no, this it just, looks like a book. All I hope is that I mean, I think Apple will start taking notice if it hurts their bottom line. That's always usually how it works. <laughs> if it, because I mean, uh, you have to remember how many how many units how many iOS devices are there? Forty. Mm -hmm. Forty. I don't want to say 40 million because I actually have no idea. But when that starts hurting them, where people saying uh, Android doesn't have this because right now we don't know that, uh, right. and the, and people start saying, wait a second, what's going on? Or if this becomes a remote exploit, if this goes, if this is baked into one of the the system apps, now we have an even bigger problem and, because and you can't get rid of it. Let's say this. Let's say you're on the side of the NSA. Let's to play devil's advocate. Let's say. Let's say they're stopping terrorists. Let's say they're stopping a lot of terrorists, but they can't say so because there's a bigger operation to take down Al Qaeda for, for you know, all time, permanently. Put them in the grave. Done. End terrorism the world over. But they need this technology to do it. Okay. Let's say you believe that. Let's say you believe it'll never be misused against you know a journalist or a revolutionary or some guy that's got crazy ideas that's on the side of the street. Let's say that's the case. The issue is these people are punching holes, security holes, giant gaping security holes 
into our products. What makes you think that, you know, the Chinese hackers over in the next country aren't going to try to exploit this stuff? What makes you think that, you know, the guys who stole the credit card numbers from Target, which we'll talk about here soon, what makes you think that they won't try to exploit these holes? I mean, when you punch a security hole in, when you put a back door in, the real danger is not the people who are using the back door. The real danger is other people that find the back door, that can sell the back door, that can say, hey, for $100,000... You guys that created the, uh, you know, the, the crypto locker, yeah, yeah, here. You can have that back door into our phones and uh, lock up all of our data and make us pay. Uh, that's where the real danger comes in. And so you were talking about a bottom line. It's already hit American tech companies. We're already seeing the bottom line hurt by other countries canceling and flat out refusing to use American tech services anymore. Um, and that's one of the reasons that Microsoft is fighting back is because enough people in enough countries have said, hey, we can't use this anymore. These government contracts you have with us, when they expire, that's it. We're not renewing. This NSA stuff is scary. And it, it threatens our sovereignty. Um, you, you can look at the uh, Der Spiegel online, or Der Spiegel, the newspaper in Germany, uh, posted a wonderful, wonderful article uh, about the spy gear for the NSA, and they've got a catalog of exploits for just about every maker of every piece of network equipment you could ever buy in your business. So they've got BIOS exploits for Dell, they, which you know persist over operating system upgrades. They persist over firmware upgrades. They've got you know stuff for hard drive firmware to infect that, so it can constantly re report back the data it sees. Uh, they've got um, stuff for Cisco, Juniper, Huawei, um, all of these different network technologies that they can just compromise, that they can get direct access to, whatever you need. And we're about to see the bottom line on all of these giant companies, Western Digital, Cisco, Juniper. Um, we're about to see that bottom line take a massive nosedive. I can only imagine they're running around with their hair on fire right now. This is huge news, and this is dangerous. Well, we didn't we hear about a year ago uh, American companies did not want to buy Chinese manufactured parts because they were afraid of the back door? Yep. And I remember, it, yeah, now it's back, now it's on our shores. Exactly. So, you know, we're, we're telling people, hey, no, you don't buy this Chinese network equipment from these people in China. Don't buy uh, H3C access uh points and, uh, and switches, because you don't know. They could be backdoored by the Chinese government, but you would have no idea. And now, we've been doing that shit to our products. We've been exploiting our, our products. So you take the only section of the American economy that's worth a shit right now, and you do this to it? Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, really? And how how short-sighted do you problem. have to be? Well, the, the problem is that it's again, we're doing this for the sake of keeping Americans safe, and that's the problem. It's we can't we can't pin we can't one pinpoint a single terrorist attack that we've saved. We can't pinpoint anything that we've done, mainly because they're not telling us. Even if it has, let's say it's actually stopped a hundred uh, terrorist attacks, we can't publicize that. I don't know why we can't publicize that. I think that would be excellent propaganda to say at least this is working, but we can't even do that. Right. So all we hear are all we're hearing is the one side because the other side doesn't want to talk and when they do talk, they make it sound like a commercial. Um, they make it sound like a commercial on 60 minutes and everyone yeah. saw right through it. What it's, what what's it's next? Bad. And the problem is, is that it's only going to get worse. I mean, the way Edward Snowden's yeah. been talking and The Guardian and all this, it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. It looks like it's going to get 100% worse yeah. to the point that we hear now, oh, we may want to grant him asylum just to get the documents back. Right, which is interesting because he stated a, a whole bunch. He said, look, I don't have the documents. Greenwald and company has the documents and uh, I imagine WikiLeaks has probably got an encrypted copy of the documents, too. Um, and he did that, so when he went to Russia, when he goes to these other countries, whoever takes him in for asylum, they say, well, hey, 
we'll grant you asylum if you give us all the NSA data. You know, uncensored. He goes, look, I don't have it. I'm sorry. And that way he can't be robbed on the street. He can't have his apartment broken into. He's keeping himself safe. He doesn't have the stuff anymore. It's all in Greenwald's hands. It's all in the press's hands. Everyone else has it, and there are a million copies. You can't stop it. Well, and... And, I mean, the, the biography that we're hearing about him is that he's a really smart guy. Whether you think that he's a traitor or a, nat- or a hero, he did – it sounds like he did everything right. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we hear this, and, and, like, and then you just, you just shudder. What else? What else? And they keep on talking about it's a good thing they're doing this every, uh, every couple days so we stay on top of it. It's not like yeah. they released everything all at once, and we need people to sift through it. It's every week we're hearing something even, even, even worse, even worse right. than the prior week, and that's that's really scary. The thing that now the iOS platform is compromised, and that they're working on a remote solution. I'm sure Android is going to be next because again, they're gonna they're gonna tell whoever oh, the yeah. open source people you need to use this patch when you build. Oh, they've your already device. tried. They've already tried. And, and there was a, uh, a classic case of several, several years ago where there was a submitted patch, which was, it was fairly clever. Um, There's a submitted patch in the Linux kernel that would actually put a backdoor in. And they said, ah, yeah, no. It got shot down really quick. They said, yeah, no, this, this is a bug here because this implements a security flaw in this manner. It's, it's kind of hard to see, but, you know, with our... our you know, 10,000 Linux developers, you can't really include this, and then they push the patch away. And now you look back and you think, well, hold on a minute. Who actually did submit that patch? And, uh, oh, did, did any of you, you know, raise your hands in the audience, did any of you get a new laptop for Christmas? Uh, there's a small chance, if you're on the NSA's radar, that they intercepted it in the mail to install spyware. Um, the, uh, the Verge has got a great write-up, again, from Der Spiegel, um, about the NSA. It's a codenamed Cottonmouth, where they use a USB hardware implant that secretly provides the NSA with remote access to the compromised machine. Shows them what you're doing, what you're looking at, data you're transmitting, all that stuff. Secretly pulled apart your laptop, installed the spy chip, put it back together, you're done. Um, and they're intercepting these in the mail when they come to you. Yeah, this is this is huge. Is this a hardware exploit that a reformat won't uh, would stop? Uh, a reformat so you will, got not stop laptop, this. will not stop this. No, uh, well, this BIOS flash. What about? This I, looks I don't get like, you. Uh, it looks like a USB hardware implant. So no, I wouldn't imagine a BIOS flash would do anything for it. Um, there's there's a couple in here that target hard drive firmware. I mean, this this is pretty huge. This means uh, any piece of technology, any random piece of technology, and I'm looking around at all my gadgets right now, anything you have in your home that, you know, you bought is potentially compromised. If it's from an American company, it could be compromised. If it got shipped to you in some way, it could be compromised. It looks like, well, the problem is then you say, well, I'll just go out to the local store and buy it. But that just means that they were installed there. That's the best point of entry right. because, oh, yeah. because you just have all IBM packages or Lenovo or wherever shipped to this facility, this distribution center, and then you have the agents in there just put it on every machine. Yeah, just just walk up to the Geek Squad manager, hand him a national security letter, let your guys walk in the back and do their thing for a couple hours. Well, I mean, I don't know if you remember, this was years ago, where uh, the Geeks got, got caught removing uh, personal information yep. of, of attractive females who had issues with their computers. Mm-hmm. And they were caught red-handed, so I don't even think a national security letter, I think you just have to ask nicely, and they'll just do it for you. Yeah. And again, I don't want to pick on the Geek Squad, but th- this was a story a few years ago. But it's just, it's, it's just, it's permeating everywhere now, and to the point that you can't trust anything, anything that you buy, anything that you want to buy. You can't trust VGA cables now because apparently they've got a VGA cable um, that uh, radios back whatever you're viewing on your monitor. And okay, this is just, I mean. 
and now you, you're living off the grid. Those whole conspiracy theorists over there that want to live off the grid, they're not yeah. necessarily wrong anymore. And, and if you live off the grid, now you're a, a big red flashing bulb on the NSA's radar. And I just keep on holding that the smart people, the people that are maybe that the, the quote unquote terrorists that are doing this, they're really smart. And to say that, uh, and to say that they're doing it, they're encrypting, they're making their own computers, they're checking all this, they're they're being they're doing their due diligence. Look at CryptoLocker. The the police departments are getting hit, and no, and they're doing federal investigations. I don't think they're going to find them. I think CryptoLocker is either going to stop or they're going to they're going to they're going to mess up and get caught. Right. I think everything the NSA is doing it's just going to it, first of all, it's going to destroy the American tech sector. Uh, so, you know, if you're a tech guy and this doesn't get resolved fairly quickly, especially in security, start looking for a job out of the country because everything here is compromised. Um, it's So you're shipping your tech, app. You're going to be yeah. living in Europe writing your app. Right. Living in Why Australia. on earth would you do this to the one thing in the American economy that's actually growing, that's actually working? Uh, I mean, tech is the only thing that wasn't hit hard by the recession. Why do you throw this on top of it? Uh, I, I just I don't get it. I don't get it. If, if I had to pick a, uh, a terrorist in this scenario, it would be the NSA is a terrorist, and they're economic terrorists. I mean, it's 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 we're trying. Look, I'm I want the country to be safe. I want to I, let's figure this out. There has to be a right way to figure this out. And I don't know what it is, but there's smarter people. There are people smarter than me that can sit there and say, "This is some psychological pattern. This is what we're seeing. Let's use the brains there to figure this stuff out." And if you need to go after someone, we have a court system that will let you do it. And I, I think yeah. that's that's what we need. That's what we really need to focus on. And let's find the right way. So I mean, all we can do now apparently is just write to your congressperson and say this is bad, or fund the EFF, or or look at the ACLU. Like really try and write to the people to say, look, we don't want this. O make some sort of oversight committee. Let's do something to change what's going on. Let's rewrite this law. Right. And I think that the problem is, is that the American public doesn't want – the American public wants to be safe. And uh, we need more of these really big stories to go viral before people say, uh, wait a second. I was okay with you spying on the Gmail. I was okay with this. But now you're going into my phone. Uh, that I'm trying to take a stand on. Right. Now you're well, you inside my house. Just pop on the mic. Just pop on the mic, listen in on whatever you're doing. If you're not uh, making, you know – American approved conversation expect a knock so I mean that's that's what we have to focus on if and only I, Stalin or Hitler had this kind of power back in the day yeah they they could have really really taken over but uh, it's, a, it's a good thing they didn't so and then what's to say that the Chinese the Russians the terrorists don't have the same thing because I'm sure right. a lot of these exports or, could or be on the black market yeah or exploiting the back doors right I mean, because you put it in, all you got to do is is reverse engineer this. The Syrian army, the Syrian, uh, they have their own cyber terrorism force. Mm -hmm. uh, the Iraqis yeah, have Iran. it. Yeah. yeah, Iran. I mean, something, look, if if somebody has it, the bad guys have it. And we looked at this with, with automatic weapons. It was supposed to be for the government, and now the, now citizens have it. We have to, I mean, we're focusing, we're, whatever you do, the bad guys will get a hold of. So we have to learn to fight fight the same way and we have to do it smarter than that which is hard so anyway we're out of time so I'm just gonna say goodbye and until next week see you guys bye